Shalom, Yahshua Allah, giving all praise and glory to the Most High and the Mashiach El Shai, by some of Mashiach El Shai, in the name of the Lord and Savior. You know, I, uh, I received a comment on one of the videos I did. I guess this is really, it's really vexes people. You see these 12 tribes. Mine say indigenous. You can't see that at this time, but it says indigenous. Twelve tribes of Israel, mostly in the Americas, but scattered worldwide in the four corners of the earth. And give you the tribes here and others. You know, scattered around the world. So it's okay. Because we're going to be gathered from the four corners of the earth. I want to look at uh, 1 John. Now before we do, let's go to number 16. One. Go to number 16. Number 16 and 1. Damn. Now, Korah, the son of Ishar, Son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Heleth, the sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250. 250. Princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. So they got 250 men who was famous among the children of Israel. Men of renown, right? Got the name. And they gathered themselves together against Moses. So they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Take too much upon you. So you think you something. Taking too much upon you. Seeing all the congregation are holy. See, we all holy. Besides y'all. You and Aaron. Moses. Every one of them. And the most high is among them. Wherefore, then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the most high. So who you think you are? Lift yourself up above the congregation of the Most High. And when Moses heard it, when Moses heard this, he fell upon his face. There's 250 men, renowned, known, against two men. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. And he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow, most High will show who is. Most High will show who are His, and who is holy, and will cause him to come near unto Him. Even Him whom He have chosen will He cause to come near unto Him. This do. Take you censors, Korah, and all His company. Put your incense in your censers. That's what this is. An incense holder. And put fire therein. And put incense in them. Therefore the most high tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the most high does choose. He shall be holy. We take too much upon you. You sons of Levi. So Moses hit them back with you take so much, too much, think too much of yourself, you sons of Levi. And Moses said unto Korah, Here I pray you, ye sons of Levi, seeth it but a small thing unto you, that the Most High of Israel, the power of Israel, have separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Most High and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. These are men. You know, women, this is all men of the tribe of Levi. And he, 
thou brought thee near to him, and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee, and seek ye the priesthood also? For which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Most High? And what is Aaron that ye murmur against him? Say, what is my brother? You murmured against my brother, Aaron. If Moses sent to call the man, Abraham, the sons of Eliab, which said, we will not come up. He sent for him and said, we ain't coming to Moses. Forget Moses. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of the land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us? Thinking that somebody? See that, you took us out of Egypt. We in captivity in Egypt. Let my people go. From what? From captivity. They talking about it's a land of milk and honey. Are you serious? Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey, or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards which thou put out the eyes of these men. Wilt thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. Say, we ain't coming to you. And Moses was very wroth. Moses got angry and said unto the Most High, Respect not thou their offering. Say, don't respect their offering. This is the power that the Most High is given Moses for him to say it to the Most High. Remember the Most High dealt with him mouth to mouth. The angel of the Most High dealt directly. He didn't have to wait to go to sleep for no or have no visions or have his directions directed to him in a dream. This is what he said. And Moses was very wroth, very fit, verse 15, and said unto the Most High, Respect not thou his, their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. So I ain't did nothing to them. I ain't taken nothing from them. Neither have I hurt any of them. Mind you, it's 250 of them against Moses and Aaron. And Moses said unto Korah, be thou and all thy company before the Most High, thou and they and Aaron to tomorrow, and take every man his censer and put incense in them, and bring ye before the Most High every man his censer, 250 censers, thou also and Aaron, each of you this censer. And they took every man his censer and put fire in them and laid incense thereon and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the glory of the Most High appeared unto all the congregation. Not the Most High, but the glory of the Most High appeared unto all the congregation. But the Most High is dead. But they representing the Most High. He's representing the Most High, the glory of the Most High appeared unto all the congregation. And the Most High spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation. You get away from them. That I may consume them in a moment. That he can consume them in a moment. And they fell upon their faces and said, O Most High, the power of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin? And will thou be wroth with all the congregation? You say, so one man said, and you be wroth with all 250 of these men or 249? Most I spake unto Moses, saying, speaking to the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, the Dan, Date of the Dathan, and Abaron. And Moses rose up and went into the Than and Abaron. And the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. They don't touch nothing that they have, lest you're going to be consumed in all their sins. So they got up 
from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram on every side. And Dathan and Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tents, and their wives, and their sons, and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Most High have sent me to all to do all these works. For I have not done them of mine own mind. So I ain't do this for my own thoughts. If these men die, the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Most High have not sent me. Say, then the Most High ain't sent me. If they die like every other man die, just live, live in the old age to die, then you know the most I have not seen. But if the most high make a new thing and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up with all that opportunity unto them, and they go down quick into the pit. Then you shall understand that these men have provoked the Most High. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them. So the ground clave asunder that was under them. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up. The earth opened up and swallowed them up and their houses and all the men that appertained unto Korah and all their goods everything they had they and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit and the earth closed upon them the earth closed up again and they perished from among the congregation open it up let them fall out in the pit in the hole and close itself back up. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them. For they said, Let the earth swallow us up also. And there came out of fire from the Most High. And there came out of fire from the Most High. Because he's a consuming fire. And consumed the 200 and fifty men that offered incense. There came out a fire from the Most High and consumed the two hundred and fifty men that offered incense. <laughs> That's the power. When you roll it with the Most High, that he us. Why it tells us to go to 1 John 4 and 1. First John 4 and 1. John 4 and 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit. If you don't believe every spirit, then we all have spirits. A spirit. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of the Most High, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Let us know. Many false prophets are going out into the world.
Hereby know ye the Spirit of the Most High. Let's read that one more time. First John 4 and 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of the most high. Why? You gotta try the spirits whether they are of the most high. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. See? Many false prophets are gone into the world. Now I can give you a sign to look at a false prophet. Hereby know ye the spirit of the Most High. This how you know if they are the Holy Spirit. Part of it. Every spirit that confesses that Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, the Lord and Savior, is come in the flesh is of the Most High. So when you came in the flesh, your flesh means you had a certain appearance. In the way you look. Was he the so-called white image that they painted of Caesar Borgia? That's still on the earth today that our people believe in? Or was he a so-called white man? This other one that the Jehovah's Witness believe in. It's a different picture. I don't know what his name is. Maybe the ones that the Mormons believe in. Look at their book. They got a picture of a so-called white man in there. It's supposed to represent this Jesus Christ. That's what I say. Hereby know you the spirit of the Most High. Every spirit that confesses that of Mashiach Gabashai is come in the flesh is of the Most High. So how do you look? Revelation, the first chapter. It's basis, but it's not basis for someone that don't know. And people hear this and they still don't want to believe it. Let's look at 13 to 14. Well, let's look at 14. His head, but this is the revelation of Mashiach Kalashai in verse 1. The revealing of Mashiach Kalashai. So verse 14 says, His head and his hairs, the hair on his head, the hair on his face, were white like wool. So the texture of it is wool. He said it's fully gray, like you see my beard. It's gray. That's what he's seeing. It's white, you see? But the texture of it is important. It's wool. As white as snow. And his eyes as a flame of fire. And it's verse 15. And his feet. So you know your feet are the same color as your whole body. And his feet like unto fine brass. Brass is a derivative of brown, as if it burned in a furnace. Come on. You burn anything in a furnace, turn black. So he was blue black. So you preachers, you gotta acknowledge this fact. If you are a prophet of the most high. And his feet like a defined brass of it burned in the furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. He had a strong voice. So now, going back to 1 John 4 and 2. Hereby know you the spirit of the Most High. Every spirit that confesses that of Mashiach Hashem is come in the flesh is of the Most High. So now that you know that he was a man that was that had very, very dark skin, what you might call today blue black. Are you acknowledging that? That's what you gotta look at. In the flesh, your flesh, you don't know what your flesh is, pinch yourself. That's your flesh. You get cut, that's a flesh wound. So it's saying, every spirit that confesses that a Mashiach of a shy is coming to flesh is of the most high. So he come to flesh, and you gotta acknowledge the fact that he had hair of wool, nappy hair, and his feet like a defined brass has been burned in the furnace. You burn brass in the furnace, it's gonna be very, very dark. Well, listen, and every spirit that confesses not that a Mashiach of Shai has come in the flesh, it don't matter how he look, as long as his blood is red, it was shed for me. Is that what the Christians say? 
and every spirit that confesses not that a Mashiach Shah has come in the flesh, if you don't want to go against the fact that he didn't come here as Caesar Boys here, that white image that they painted, so-called white image that they painted in 1492, Leonardo da Vinci and so forth. Come on. If you ain't against that, And this is that spirit of anti mashiach you against him. Whereby ye have heard that it should come, and even now, this day, already is in the world. See? That's what started. So you ain't going against the fact that our people, especially you so-called black creatures out there, you got it up in your house, in your mama's house, your daddy's house, your grandfather, your grandmother's, up in the church. And it's sad because a lot of times you have that last summer picture in there, and you don't even look at it. He ain't never observed you even look at it like he got some kind of power. To it. Better understand, understand. Go to Matthew 24. And verse 4. Matthew 24 and 4. And Masha Gosha answering and said unto them, Take heed that, that no man deceive you. So what are you saying? It's don't let nobody fool you. Because you know, scripture said that the ignorant be ignorant. Some don't want to listen, so they're gonna be ignorant. And they're gonna burn the the the, the flaming fire that the most high is gonna sit on Masha Gosha and put people in, throw them in there. Because they don't want to listen. This is the last days, he said, he's speaking to us in the last day by his son. And his son is coming with the spirit of the Most High. That's the spirit of the Most High. You don't want to listen. That's why he says, take heed that no man deceive you. A lot of you already been deceived. And you deceive yourself. You let evil come in and cause you to be deceived. Well, you can't get this. You can't get this in some, you tell us some demons, straight up. These are some demons. They won't allow you to get it. They don't want you to get it. That's why you gotta exercise them demons, them devils. Rebuke them devils. Many times you rebuke Satan to death. But are you scared to rebuke him? Because he's in there. And there's little imps with him. You know, these was 2,000. Went into 2,000 pigs and ran down the hill and drowned. So I say, take heed and no man deceive you. Don't let nobody fool you. Don't let nobody lie to you. For many shall come in my name. Like Christian. You got Christ in that, right? Put that in there. They're going to come in his name. Or they're going to be preaching in the name of Jesus. Or about Shem, Yahweh Shai, or about Shem, or about Shai, or about Shai, or about Across the board. Christian church, from the Catholic on down to Hebrew Israelites. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Mashiach, and shall deceive many. Now, if the Most High said, in these last days, go speak to us through it by his son, in Hebrews 1 and 2, then how are we going to listen to someone that says, follow me. I'm the spirit of the Most High. I have the spirit of the Most High, or I am the spirit of the Most High. Like he said, I am Mashiach. He said, Mashiach. Speaking to us in these last days. So here yeah, we say from 1 Corinthians 3.23, we are Mashiachim. We are the anointed, and Mashiach is the most high. Tell you that. But those that are spiritual enough to understand, everybody understand it because everybody just wants some information, precepts, get understanding, and not really the true understanding, because you gotta understand the law of spirit. To go to the order of Melchizedek. Oh, now we're talking about something all together different. But how you gonna go get there if you ain't really looking at this spiritual? Look what he said. Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Mashiach, and shall deceive many. That you're gonna see deceive many. But you're gonna be deceived because you're simple. 
You know, if you simple then hey, you was you was to see. What make you not simple? You still trying to hold on to your simplicity. Or what you do when you were simple. So you preachers don't know. They don't know if they don't know. And you should hold on to whatever it is they gave you. And you know they coincide with what you was learning in the Word. If you was reading. And especially now if you're going over these precepts. You should know. Nowhere in the world you should be. The simple. Speaking of the symbol, we'll go to uh, Romans 16, 17. Romans 16, 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, say, mark them which cause divisions and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. So you have a right to avoid those that cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. Especially with our people. Israel. Most of us say he loved Jacob. So are you not to love Jacob? And most of you don't even know each other. Hating on each other. You don't know each other personally. You just know people. You don't know me. You don't love me. You don't know me. But it said, avoid them that cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. And avoid them. So with all these different doctrines going around, you can read that and say, yeah, that's why I'm avoiding you. Because you don't believe in the doctrine that I believe in. I'm going to avoid you if you don't believe in the doctrine that I believe in. That's the vision. And offenses. Contrary to the doctrines you have learned. Say so to avoid them. Now we got to keep on reading. For they that are such serve not our power, Mashiach. Uh oh. They don't serve a Mashiach, Yahweh Shah. With their own belly. Else they'll be pushing a Mashiach, Yahweh Shah. They'll be pushing. All praise to the Most High, all loyal to the Most High, when the praise is coming to them. It'll be about praise to the Most High, because the Most High name is Jealous. His name is Jealous. He said, I will melt you. But no, like, you, don't, you don't fear the Most High, you ain't scared of the Most High. But wait till you lift this mercy and grace off you. And you start using this sword to deal with you. You start using the children of the devil that's already operating. And I ain't talking about Esau. And I'm talking about you Israelites. You're the children of the devil. So what do you think two thirds of our people are? You gonna say they're the children of the most high? Come on. He just said you're anti Mashiach. If you don't stand against anyone that's saying that a Mashiach that was shy, they'll know that Savior is a so called white man. When you know he had hair of wool and feet like a to fine brass with burning in the furnace, and you standing up for that, oh yeah. You against him. You hate him. You can't say you love him and you against him. You got you got some other entity that you bowing down to. And our forefathers did it. Some of our some of you might still be doing it. Still can't get it out of your system. You hate the Most High. You hate him, Mashiach Kavashai. The anti me, you hate him. Don't get it twisted. You hate him. That's what it's saying. You got to keep it just the way it is, just as it's written. The Most High gave us enough here in the language that we're going to mainly speak. In this world, scattered in the four corners of the earth in all different languages, to be able to get this knowledge and some understanding. I did a show, we did it in Spanish, did it in Portuguese, and English. And uh, 
uh, what the Haitians speak of, Patois or whatever it's called, French dialect. Hebrew Israelites speaking these different languages, breaking it down. So it says, For they that are such serve not our power, Mashiach, to help shot, but their own belly, and by smooth words and fair speeches, the seed of hearts of the simple. See? <laughs> So if you're simple-minded, then yeah, you're going to be deceived because you're simple. But if they're going to deceive the ones that's not simple, if you're not simple, they can't deceive you. But if you're, just, you're simple, then you look around and say, wow, why, am I, why, why do I believe this? Next thing you know, when you realize that you have believed the wrong doctrine, like some people, they... they you probably have your own doctrine, but you somebody say this over here, you like that, you pull that from them, you pull that over here, you can't pull it all together in the word, you can't preach up, can't preach up in the word, because you got this over here that they preach up to somewhere else from what they trying to bring for. And you ain't hearing that, you just hear that one scripture, you I like that, you pull that scripture, then you hear a scripture over here, somebody else teaching, you pull that over here, or some breakdown that you you, you like, it fits your spirit. It's not like that. Look at Proverbs 1 and 22. They say, how long, ye simple ones? Proverbs 1, 22. How long, ye simple ones, when ye love simplicity? I start talking to you. He said, when you love simplicity, all you got to do is just listen. Go. Let me think about it. You went to church. All you do is sit up there and preach a holler and scream. And, and then see the music get to go on. They go running around the church shouting. They think they're shouting like this is something that is called the Holy Ghost. real and you have in the Bible they can't teach you nothing they can't show you nothing precept upon precept precept upon precept we get understanding you know I pray for my people that they'll come out of this simplicity that's why you say how long these simple ones would you love simplicity what did the preacher teach you on the day I don't know but the choir sure sound good it's a concert. It's, a, it's, 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 it's like a play. You think I'm lying? You go there, you'll see her. Just watch your watch. Your, watch. Certain times, certain things going to happen. And certain times, certain things going to happen. Next week, certain things going to happen at the same time, same time, same time. It's a play. You see. You pay attention. That's why you say, how long you simple ones when you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning. Yeah, the scorners delight in their scorning. They're always saying something. They're going to say something about my glasses, uh, my headpiece, uh, my, my, my something carnal. But they ain't going to say nothing about these scriptures, these breakdowns that's coming out, the word of the most high. And then you go to their page, they ain't got nothing but somebody else doing something. Simple, simple-minded people. How long these simple ones would you love simplicity and the scorners delight in their scorning? And fools hate knowledge. You a fool if you hate knowledge. And go to verse 7. Proverbs 1 7. The fear of the most high to be scared of him. To be afraid of the most high. And when you like that, you respect the most high is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the most high is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. You can't tell them that you're a fool if you despise the proper application of knowledge and to be instructed. You're a fool. Look at Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49. 
and we'll look at five and six. I still have 49 and five. And now, said the Most High, that for me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. So we do it now, bringing Jacob again to the Most High. Though Israel be not gathered, though we be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Most High. And my power shall be my strength. The Most High gonna be my strength forever and ever and ever. Because what power can you get beyond the power of the Most High? You wait on spiritual power. The Most High is our strength and our spiritual power at this time and forever. Forever and ever and ever. I owe him ya. I mean, he's our power forever and ever and ever. And he said, It is a light thing that thou should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. It's not everyone. That's why no matter how much you call yourself coming into this, it's about learning it, living it, and applying it in your life. To be the preserved, the reserved, the remnant, the remnant, the ransom, the election, the elect, all which is a certain number, one third of the twelve tribes of Israel, the sheep that hear of Mashiach and Rashad's voice, which he is the word of the Most High. You see? The sanctified, the glorified, the justified, all these different words that you see in these scriptures representing who? The preserved of Israel. Preserved for the kingdom. See, the Most High is laboring to make us perfect. But some of you are pushing the Most High aside. That's why he, you're going to really get dealt with because he's laboring to make you perfect. He done brought this truth to you and you are pushing it to the side to take advantage of it. So therefore, you really don't care. And that's before the Most High. Everything we do is before the Most High. You really don't care. Colossians 3 17. And what's up? You doing word of deed. Do all by the sum of my shadow shot. Give me thanks to the most high and the Father. By the show of my shadow shot. In the name of the Lord say, Going to the throne of the most high. That's why it says, hey. And he said, Is it a right thing that thou should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob? Twelve tribes of Jacob. And to restore the preserved of Israel. See, this ain't for everyone. It's like a revolving door. People come and people go. Because they ain't really real. Only the real going to endure to the end. Who's really real? I ain't found that many people that's really real. You see a few... Like I said, preserve the Israel, few of us are still there from of old. Preserve of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Now these Gentiles are who? Because salvation not coming to the other nations like, the, like it is for the Israelites. Yeah, we got remnants of the other nations. They ain't gonna be where we're at. They're gonna be in their own land. Working. As I say, our doors, our gates are gonna be open continually, 24-7, that they may bring the forces of the Gentiles to our gates. So we're gonna be a light to these Gentiles who are who? The nine and a half tribes. That Paul was sent out to. Most people think he went out to the other nations. He didn't go to the other nations. Most of us said in Amos 3, 1 and 2, hear this word that the Most High is speaking to you, O children of Israel, 12 tribes of Israel. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. You only know us. You don't know nobody else. Let me say he came down in Psalm 80, 81 and 5, came down in Egypt, we was in Egypt, where he heard of a language that he didn't even understand. When he changed all the languages and so forth, 
from Hebrews or all these different languages and so forth. Say, oh, you don't know, you don't know them languages. So they're praying to him in their, in their language. He don't know nothing about that. Whatever they say, they ain't praying to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said, "Here, the language he even understand." That's the most I said. It. Read it for yourself. So he ain't telling everybody. So this, these Gentiles are the scattered, the dispersed, the foreigners, the uncircumcised, the ones that Israel was calling Gentiles. Because they were saying, like some of you out there think, my shekel is shy, it came to us, you only with us. You ain't with nobody else but us. No. He got on us from the four corners of the earth, Israelites. Well, I said the salvation. My second shot said off his own mouth. Uh, John 4 22. You worship, you know not what. We know what we worship. The salvation. That's power, rulership, and authority is of the Jews. The other nation have their salvation. It's their salvation that they in right now. So you leaders, you preachers ain't teaching this, then you ain't trying to gather the tribes. Of Israel back together to the Most High, the res preserved of the Most High, the one third of the twelve tribes. You're not teaching the truth. You're not teaching what this Bible is talking about. So it's all I'm talking about the same thing. Israel, 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 Israelites, the Israelites, the Israelites, and it's not talking about the Jewish people because ISA from that side, remember, is a subject to me pertaining to being like Judah. <laughs> Acts seven. 37. So we got to come up on another level in these last days. Acts 7 37. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, a prophet shall the most high your power raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me him shall ye hear this is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the mount Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. So, everybody goes to Exodus 3, the third chapter, and says, It's the Most High. The angel spoke the words of the Most High. The angel of the Most High. It's no different than Genesis 1 and 2. I mean, speaking of Hebrew Israelites, you know, we know Jesus 1 and 1 says, and the Allah created the heaven and the earth. But verse 2, it says what? And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of the Most High moved upon the face of the waters. The spirit of the Most High moved upon the face of the waters. He started to create everything the Most High did by the spirit of the Most High. Now, this is real simple, but it's spiritual. Psalms 104 and 4 says, who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire. So in Genesis 1 and 2, it didn't say, and the spirits, it said the spirit of the Most High. Which is the angel of the Most High. Or the spirit of the Most High. Same entity. Same entity. So you see here in Acts 738, most people forget about what it says 
in Exodus 3 and 2. From what we just read in Acts, the seventh chapter, 37, 38 verse. Acts 3 and 2. No, Exodus 3 and 2. So like it. And the angel of the Most High, remember he make his angel spirits, ministers of the Most High, do the will of the Most High. And the angel of the Most High appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. So now, it says here, in verse 38 of Acts 7 chapter, this is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai. The angel that spake to him in the Mount Sinai, ministering the word of the Most High and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. What is he talking about? We pass Exodus, now we in Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter. And we look at Deuteronomy 18 and 15 first. And the most high that power will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken, ye shall listen. Verse 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. What did he say? And I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. This is what they're speaking on in Acts 7, 37, 38. It shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name. And he came in the name of the Most High. Power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will require it of, it of him. See? So, this is what you see in here. Mashiach El Shai is prophesied here. And that's what Acts is speaking of. And it's saying what it's saying concerning our power of Mashiach El Shai. Go to John the first chapter in verse 45. John 1 45. Philip findeth Nathaniel and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses, we just read about, in the law, Deuteronomy 18, 15, and 18. In the law and the prophets did write of Masiach Yavashah of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Hmm, the son of Joseph? That's clear. So, he was spoken about throughout the law and the prophets. That's why he even said it himself. Go to, uh, Luke 24 and 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which was written in the law of Moses. Now how are you going to really teach the truth and what is said here in Acts 7 37 and 38 going back to the law 
if you don't believe in the law. You don't you teach that we're not under the law. And all they're gonna do is go back and forth. You can't avoid it. You gotta come out of your air. And come back to this truth. Before it's too late. You gotta repent. And really look at this. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake of you. This is Luke 22, 24. While I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. See? Law of Moses and the prophets concerning the Mashiach Galashah. And once you see him, which he said he come in the volume of the book is written of him. To do the will of the Most High. As the Spirit of the Most High, he came in the flesh to do the will of the Most High. And he went back to the right inside of the Most High to do the Most High's will. And his will is to send him here to judge and make war, set righteousness up on this earth. That's his next big mission. Then he's going to teach us a, a thousand years of the Father. Then he's going to be subject to the Most High, and the Most High is going to be all in all, forever and ever. Ever. I will love you <laughs> forever. Yes. Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scripture. That's why some of you don't understand the scripture because you don't see the only begotten Son of the Most High in the Bible of the book. That's why you get stuck. Or you're going to go to deal with history. You're going to try to find some way not to deal with these precepts. As you should. From the old to the new. But you preachers out there, y'all don't even believe in the law of the most high. So how are you going to actually preach up from what it is that he, the most high told us in the law? And you're going to put his words in his mouth, right? So you believe in Mashiach Yahweh Shai. So this is what he said out of his own mouth. Let's see what he said. Coinciding right with what the law said. This is real. Look at uh, St. John 14. St. John 14. And let's look at 8. Philip said to him, Mashiach, Master, show us the Father. It is suffices, it will satisfy us. Mashiach said to him, have I been so long time with you and yet have I